Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about our current 2021 bathing routine with noose and give you some tips and tricks that work for us. I'm six and a half months pregnant. It's hot. To make it more comfortable on me and the noose, we have developed a system that we use and it works for us. This is going to be different. Seasonally, we, we might change it up, but this is what we do in the summer. And like today, it's raining and we're able to bathe and dry comfortably. And so I'm going to share that with you. So if you want to see our current bathing routine, then keep watching. Boomer is finished, but he just helped me do the intro, but I'm gonna get Duke out for y'all and show you on him. So to start out, we are not bathing in the garage. This is just our garage drying station, but we're gonna be bathing out in the driveway. And I like to bathe out in the driveway because we're only bathing for 10 minutes or so, but the drying time, it's two hours. I don't like them sitting out in the heat. So I like to bathe in a garage. If you don't have a garage, we, us we used to use a pop-up but I just don't want to be setting up a pop-up when I'm pregnant in the summer and it's hot. It's just nice to have a station already set up so that you can be comfortable inside. I'm gonna show you a few products that I love to have in my drying setup. So I love to have like a mechanic stool so that when I am drying, I can sit here at any level and dry and wheel around the dog instead of standing up the whole time. This is really gonna save your back, especially since drying can be two, two plus hours, uh, an hour and a half, depending on the dog's coat thickness. So for a day full of bathing noose, like I sometimes have, like today I'm, I'm doing three, it really will save your back. Along with the table, you need to have a nice table. The table that we love is the Simple Room table, and that is actually the one that is out in our driveway for our drying station. Also, this mechanic stool, stool is nice because has a little tray where you can keep your combs or anything that you're using during the drying and trimming stage. So this is nice for, we won't touch on trimming today, but trimming feet, it's nice to not be, I'm usually on my knees to trim feet or squatting and bending over, and then you can't really see what you're doing. So this is nice to put you at um, any level that you need to be at. And you wanna have an arm so that you can keep, this is a grooming arm that his head is attached to, um, and that keeps a dog from dancing around, moving around. Another tip that we have for if you really want the dog to be standing up is putting like a container up, oh, stand, stand, stand. If they don't want to be standing up, we put a container or something under them while we're doing something that needs, where they need to be standing up. like like their belly or their back leg. For our dryer, we use the K93, and it's a double motor dryer. And really that's the one product that if you could have any of these, I recommend you splurging on a nice dryer because it cuts the drying time, time down in half. We did have to have like a special outlet put in for this dryer, and eventually I want two because they're just that, that good. And if you're doing like a garage grooming setup, where the air is more stagnant and there's not such a breeze, I like to put like a, a drum fan or something. So having that on also helps helping dry the back of the dog as well as push hair and air out to keep that air flowing. For bathing and drying at night, I like to have some sort of lights because our garage lights are just not great. So I like having some sort of lights set up like this so I can see if I'm trimming late at night or drying late at night. So for bathing, we like to use a horse filmer. It really dilutes the shampoo and gets it to the skin quickest is, is what I found on a new. The shampoo that we like to use is the Fair Advantage shampoo by Chris Christensen. And this is just my everyday shampoo. I have Premix Duke's shampoo, Duke is neck. Just put a lot of shampoo with a little bit of water and mix it. So I have Duke and he is pretty gross, but pre, bathing what I like to do. I'm going to brush them out first because any tangles or mats that you get wet are just going to make that mat. So I like to use a slicker brush on the furnishings and furnishings are like the, these are feathers and then the pants are the back. We call the, the back uh, feathers pants. So I like to use this on this. I do not use this on most of the rest of the dog. I use only the slicker on the tail and the furnishings, and sometimes the chest if it's pretty gross. He's just really, really dirty right now. So we're gonna have him stand up. And I use a comb for the rest of the body, but I just like to run a brush through them. Yeah, he's just disgusting right now. So 
So I know he's not matted because we do brush him every day, but I am just giving him a once over just to get that hair. It's It's been raining for weeks and weeks, so the hair is just kind of wet and stuck together more than anything. And I like to use a comb for the rest of the body. Oh, you are so gross. If you have a dog that has a lot of dandruff, if you have the time for it, another step would be to dry them out with the dryer on a dry dog first before you wet them down. And that will blast all that dust and dander out of the dog's coat before you get them wet. And it's just an added step. Now we are going to head out to the bathing station. This is our simple groom table and we like it because it's lower in height so the noose can jump up and step up at any age. He can jump up to higher heights but our, our older girl Molly has no problem getting up on this simple groom table. So it's a simple attachment that attaches to the hose like this. Just press it in and go turn on the water. Pretty simple. Bring on the box. I like to use my hand to work it into the shirt. At this point, you can just let them soak if they're really dirty. I'll let him soak for 10 minutes and then I'm going to rinse him out. I like to stir it up high so the soap runs down. Run your fingers through as you're rinsing, and that will help move some of that dirt off as well. And I put the nozzle to the skin. Really press that dirt out. And you want to do a really good job at rinsing because nothing's worse than getting a dog on the table with a towel and realizing there's still shampoo or conditioner that you didn't want to. muzzle they have a fold right here and that's where a lot of shampoo and dirt gets trapped so when you're shampooing make sure you hit that spot and when you're rinsing make sure you hit that spot so this is right after i rinsed him you can see why you want to use a towel before going straight to the blow dryer because there is just so much dripping off of him i like to wring them out so grab the feathers bring them out you get so much water same with the tail beat and then I like to use at least two towels before I hit him with the actual dryer I start top to bottom with towel drying as well let him shake down significantly on your ear drying time with the blow dryer. So before I get them up onto the drying table, I like to have a towel on the surface of the drying table and that helps catch any water that you were blowing off of them. Instead of it just coming right back up onto their body, it's on the towel and it really helps with that drying time as well. Nice. All right, that's it. So before I turn on the dryer so it's not so light, I'm, I'm going to explain my method of drying with the dryer. I'm going to go over his whole body lightly with the dryer first just to blow the big water off and then I'll go to one side, the chest, the rear, the legs and focus on those parts for more extended periods of time.
go over a few products that I like to use between bathing. Like this week is really rainy and so they're wet and they just, those odors just stick to their hair. So I like to just spray this over them after I finish drying them. This is the Isle of Dogs and this is an odor neutralizer and it's the Violet and Sea Mist and it smells so good. So I usually just, can you see that? I'll just spray where they might be tracking stuff in and a little goes a long way with this. Next product are two products that I use when I'm brushing them, when I'm doing their daily brushing and combing. I'll use the Arturo Flash Shiny Conditioner. I like this. I um, just spray on their feathers before I brush feathers. And then each day I like to spray them with this Panagenics Hydrating Spray and it's made of like citrus and aloe and it's just adds a lot of hydration back to the coat since we're out in the sun a lot and working with them their coats go through a lot of like sun damage and stuff like that but otherwise that is it that is all we have for you today and we will catch you in the next one you say bye you say bye speak speak